Welcome to Giving Effective Feedback in the Emergency Department by the Department of Emergency Services of San Francisco General Hospital. The objectives of this training session are, first, to describe the problem of feedback in medical education, second, to introduce effective feedback strategies, third, to assess the quality of feedback in interactions between an instructor and a learner, and finally, to discuss common obstacles to feedback in the ED. Why does feedback matter? Feedback provides learners insight into their actions and the consequences of their actions to patient care. It serves as a day-to-day -day guide throughout the clerkship. It inspires goal setting. And it helps learners to continuously improve their clinical performance. In the absence of effective feedback, learners may mistakenly assume they are doing well, even when making egregious errors, learn about shortcomings only after the fact when it is too late to address them, mistakenly assume they are doing poorly and become discouraged, feel uncertain and adrift, have the sense that instructors are disinterested in their performance, or fail to set goals and progress clinically. You may be wondering if faculty really need training on how to give feedback. Here's the sampling of typical comments spoken to learners in the ED and written on ED feedback cards. Great job. Very good follow through. Good with patients. Excellent attitude. Had a very good shift. Reliable learner. Enthusiastic, upbeat. Fun to work with. Poor fund of knowledge. Needs some guidance. May improve over time. Would any of these comments help you develop concrete goals for improving your clinical performance? Instructors tend to overestimate the quantity and quality of feedback they give. In one survey, 86% of attending surgeons felt that feedback was given often, always, or immediately, while only 13% of their residents rated the feedback as highly. There are many reasons instructors may fail to give effective feedback. They may have an unclear sense of appropriate goals for the learner. They may be afraid of damaging the student-teacher relationship or concerns that the feedback can cause humiliation or discouragement. Some instructors may be uncertain about how to give effective feedback and have little training or practice in it. The ED itself has barriers to giving feedback. With a high volume of patients and high acuity of disease, attendings often have little time to spare. Learners work with multiple supervisors who may not get to know them well. There are frequent interruptions that interfere with discussion and teaching, and few quiet places to speak with learners about their progress. But the ED also offers unique opportunities for feedback delivery. There is a constant attending presence. Instructors work in close quarters with learners throughout the clinical shift. Learners perform a wide variety of tasks and repeat key clinical skills each shift. And to some extent, learners are able to cater their experience to address areas needing improvement. The components of effective feedback delivery are straightforward and many will be familiar to you. First, you need to set the stage for feedback by creating clear goals and expectations with the learner. Second, you should time your feedback well by providing immediate and frequent feedback. Feedback delivery should be interactive, specific, objective, and relevant to the goals set with the student. Feedback should always be followed by a plan for improving performance. While you will initiate feedback delivery, the learner should actively participate in all steps of feedback. Let's discuss each of these steps in a little more detail. The first step is to set the stage for feedback. This usually occurs at the beginning of the shift or the first time you meet a learner. Ask the learner to take an active role in identifying goals. You may ask, What would you like to work on this rotation? Based on their stated needs, you can suggest an area to focus on. For example, Let's concentrate on expanding a differential diagnosis. Set clear expectations for when feedback will occur. Tell the learner that you expect to give feedback after certain tasks, such as patient presentations or procedures. Suggest that the learner approach you for feedback at certain moments during the shift. As obvious as it sounds, you should announce that feedback is about to occur. Feedback can go unnoticed. Learners often do not recall receiving feedback even when instructors clearly deliver it. Be explicit. Tell the learner, I'd like to give you some feedback. The timing of feedback is critical to its effectiveness. Feedback should be immediate and frequent. Try to respond immediately to a presentation, procedure, or interaction with feedback on that activity, even if your feedback is informal and brief. Feedback should be given frequently throughout the shift so that it becomes a natural, continuous part of the clinical experience. We've discussed setting the stage for feedback and the ideal timing for feedback. 
So how do we actually deliver feedback effectively? One good place to start is to ask the learner for self-assessment by asking, for example, How do you think you did? How could that have gone better? You can then reinforce or refute the learner's perceptions. As much as possible, point out specifics when giving feedback. Spell out exactly what was positive or lacking in the learner's performance. Give examples from actions you observed firsthand. Avoid generalizations. Again, avoid generalizations. Include constructive comments. We instructors tend to give lots of praise. Remember to inform students of things they can change and improve as well. It will be easiest for learners to receive feedback if it is objective and non-judgmental. Describe observed actions and behaviors. Avoid comments on personal attributes. Focus comments on the learner's clinical performance instead. Take a moment to watch an instructor in the ED give feedback to a learner. Dr. Liebman. Hey. Hey, here's my evaluation okay, card for great. today. I'll I had a great out. shift. Thanks so much. Yeah, it was great. You did a good, 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 good job. You know, really enthusiastic, great team player, worked with everybody, good attitude. So, yeah, it was really good. Yeah. Well, everyone seemed a little bit stressed out. I just wanted to help out some. Yeah. Yeah, you did. People loved you, you know. Your nurses loved you. The doctors loved you. People like working with you. So, yeah, it was a good experience. Is there anything specific you think I could work on for next time? Um... You know, it's just, no, it's like really, really good to have you around. People people enjoyed your presence, and uh, you're enthusiastic, like I said, and I think that was really good. Good work. Well, thanks a lot. Mm -hmm. I, again, I had a good time. I'll see you on my next shift. Likewise. Good to All meet right. you. Thanks. Take care. How effective was this feedback? Were goals and expectations set? Was the timing appropriate? Was the content of feedback effective? What was done well? The instructor initiated feedback, taking an opportunity at the end of the shift. What could be improved? Providing objective rather than subjective feedback. Improving the relevance of the feedback to the learner's clinical performance rather than her attitude. Giving specific feedback on directly observed behaviors rather than from hearsay. Giving constructive feedback rather than solely praise. Here's another feedback interaction. Again, consider how effective the feedback is and what you might do differently. Dr. Singh, you asked me to check in with you about halfway through the shift. How yeah. do you think things are going? Well, I think you're doing a great job. We saw two patients together. Mm -hmm. We saw one gentleman with abdominal pain and another woman with chest pain, right? Yeah. Great. Great job. Um, and that chest x-ray we went over together, do yes. you think I did okay on that? Well, there was an infiltrate. You picked that up right away. Mm -hmm. Great job. Mm -hmm. And my notes, do you think I'm writing too much or too little? I, I really don't feel like I have an idea. Yeah, well, I took a look at them briefly, and I thought you included all the important items. You great. did an excellent job, Nick. Okay. Keep it up. Thanks. Did this instructor set expectations for feedback, give timely feedback, take appropriate steps in feedback delivery? What was done well? The learner was engaged in goal setting. Creating planned time for feedback, the learner instructor had planned to meet throughout the shift for feedback. What could be improved? Providing constructive comments as well as praise and giving specific feedback rather than broad generalizations, providing concrete examples of actions observed. The final step in giving effective feedback is to make a plan for change. Making a plan reinforces the expectation that the learner will respond to feedback by improving their performance right away. Whenever possible, suggest a specific learning plan. The plan can range from further practice to reading or observation of others. The actual learning can be done independently outside of the ED, but setting approximate timeline makes the goal more likely to be met. Here's another feedback interaction. Dr. Liebman. Hey. Hey. How you doing? So, I'm good. Today is my last day, and I just wanted to thank you for all your help with everything. Oh, yeah, sure. Good. Yeah. And I also was just wondering if you had any feedback for me. I think I maybe worked with you the most of anyone. And okay. Um, yeah, um, it was okay. Um, I think uh, your differential was uh, sometimes a little bit narrow. Um, I think you, you try to work on just having a bigger, broader um, like a list of uh, differential diagnosis and what might be going on with the patient. Um, I think that was probably the major thing. You know. Okay, I'll definitely work on that. Is Good. there anything else? Um, no, just that and maybe a little more confidence. I feel like uh, sometimes I had to really pull things out of you. So uh, just yeah. expand that differential and then kind of put it out there um, with a little bit more confidence. And uh, I think that's the major thing. So. All right. Well, okay. thanks again. Nice. Good luck. All right. Thanks. All right. 
Did this instructor create goals and expectations for feedback? Give timely feedback? Take appropriate steps in feedback delivery? Help the learner make a plan for change? While the instructor did provide constructive feedback, the instructor did not anticipate or plan feedback give timely feedback in time for her to improve her performance, give specific examples from her performance that led his impressions of her, give positive comments in addition to constructive feedback, or make a plan for improvement. To recap the elements of effective feedback, set the stage by creating common goals and expectations, announce feedback so that it does not go unnoticed, time feedback immediately after an observed action and frequently throughout the shift. Deliver feedback that is interactive, specific, constructive, and objective. Make a plan for improving clinical performance. Here's another feedback interaction. Well, that was a really interesting piece, yeah, I thought. Yeah, that was. You did a great job. I thought your history taking was wonderful. And I think that your way that you teased out the whole drug use history was absolutely essential to helping find out what's going on with her. That was very, very good on your part. The only thing that I make a comment about is when you got to the physical exam part, I thought you were a little cursory. She definitely had some physical abnormalities that I thought that I picked up on my exam. Did you happen to pick up on any of them? I didn't actually. I thought the exam was pretty normal. Right. So what do you think about in any patient that walks in with a fever and a history of drug use? Well, I guess maybe I should listen a little more for a cardiac murmur. Good. Very good. Excellent. What else? Well, if I'm thinking endocarditis, I could look for things like Janeway lesions or splinter hemorrhages, ocular nodes. Good. 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 TPI. Excellent. Excellent. So you know all this. Very good. And especially in somebody with a fever and drug use history, a good skin exam is essential. There's some things you can pick out, like an abscess, for instance, that can point towards a fever. So I think that you, you know what you need to pick out. What we need to do now is probably have you go back, re-examine the patient, and see if you can find some things that we talked about. I'll give you a hint. There is definitely something on her exam that will point to her source of fever. So why don't you go back, re-examine her. When you come back out, we'll have a discussion about certain criteria for endocarditis and which of those criteria she meets. Sound okay. good? That sounds great. Okay, we'll see you in a bit. All right. All right, good luck. Was this feedback effective? Did the instructor set the stage for feedback, give timely feedback, take appropriate steps in feedback delivery, help the learner make a plan for change? This feedback was highly effective. The feedback was announced by the instructor. The feedback was immediate, directly following a critical action. Specific comments on directly observed behavior were given. Both positive and constructive feedback was given. A timely plan for improvement was made. Now let's discuss common obstacles that make feedback a challenge in the ED. I mean to give feedback, but the shift gets busy and I never find time. Use rounds to establish expectations for feedback to ensure that it will actually happen. Set a time to give feedback by suggesting a check-in point after each patient presentation, halfway through the shift, or if all else fails, at the end of the shift. Keep in mind that effective feedback can occur in well under one minute. I hate to say negative things. This is hard for everyone. It helps to sandwich constructive comments between positive statements, ending on a positive note. There's no physical place in the emergency department for me to have a quiet conversation with a student. Give feedback to only one learner at a time. Step aside from the main work area. Offer the opportunity to speak more privately at another time if needed. I only see a learner once or twice a month. How can I help them improve over time? Work with the learner to create goals and a plan for attaining them. This may happen within a single shift or over the course of the rotation and not necessarily under your direct supervision. Encourage independent learning. I fill out the written comment cards every time I work with a learner. Is face-to-face -face feedback really necessary? Written cards often give evaluation or a summation of performance rather than true feedback. Direct feedback gives learners a chance to ask questions and to be active participants in the feedback process. It also gives learners a chance to change behavior before the end of the clerkship. The card can be reviewed with the learner and serve as a launching pad for further discussion.